Nanosatellitbolaget Gomspace ska ta in nya pengar och det här är vi såklart nyfikna på vad de ska använda dem till. Gomspace är börsnoterat på First North för ett börsvärde på 1,2 miljarder och jag har med mig vd Nils Boos. Welcome to Avanza Play. Thank you very much. Let's start from the beginning. Can you tell us a bit more about Gomspace? What do you do? Yes, Gomspace is a company that makes very small satellites, nanosatellites we call them. Uh, uh, we, we develop and we produce uh, and we sell them globally. Mm -hmm. The nanosatellites are a bit small, we can see here. Yes. Over there, the TV, yes. it's, uh, it looks really big, but yes. it's in fact it really small. What, what, yeah. what are the defining the, the nanosatellites? The nanosatellites are, are 10 by 20 by 30 centimeters, so it's, it's like this size. Uh, it's defined by a format of, of, uh, of 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters. This is six unit satellites, mm. so it consists of, um, consists of six units. Mm. And who are your customers? Our customers, are, uh, there, there's four types of customers. Mm. The first type of customers was actually also the way we started the company is universities. A lot of universities around the world, maybe 50, 60 have we sold to so far, have tested and are working with nanosatellites and, and space as part of their education. The second part is science. That can also be universities, but it can also be space agencies like NASA, ESA and, and other national space agencies. The next one is government. For, 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 for security reasons, these two satellites are, are Danish satellites that are spent uh, that are used to to surveil uh, the Arctic area uh, and figuring out how the Danes probably can do that uh, later in a more big, in a bigger scale. And the last one is the commercial area where we are selling satellites for new applications. Uh, that is typically disruptors, smaller companies or new companies that are building satellite services that can do, do new things from space that was not possible before. And that is expected to be a very, very high growing market in, in the future. Mm. That is interesting because what I've learned that this is rapid growth when it comes to the nano satellites. But yes. I, I'm not sure for how long the ordinary satellites has been uh, orbiting in space, um, but for quite some time. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about the, the nano satellites? For how long have they been in space? Well, uh, yeah, the, the, the whole nano satellite era started uh, 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 on, on the back of, of the end of the Cold War because the rockets that were used to launch warheads mm. uh, 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 or, or were ready for launching warheads were not to be used anymore because the, 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 the disarmament. And those rockets were now in, 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 in big supply to be able to launch satellites into space. And that meant that even uh, study groups at universities could have small satellites sent into space. So they started looking at space in a complete, completely different way. The old space is specialized component made to last between 15 and 25 years, mm -hmm. very, very expensive. These satellites are very small, standard electronics, uh, and not made to last, last, last nearly as long, uh, uh, but very affordable. Uh, and, and then we get into a regime, a little bit like your mobile phone, where, you, where you, you get a new mobile phone because there's new components, faster components. Mm -hmm. And we can employ that into the, the, the satellites because the turnaround is so quick. Mm. So will this last for, uh, let's say, five years? Yeah, five years. Uh, approximately five years is, is the right time. And when, when a new satellite comes up, even though it's more or less have a, sort of the same construction, it will be much faster because the new electronics uh, components will be much faster and mm. much more capable. Mm. You, you talked a bit about your customers, but um, just to, to uh, clarify and understand, who is the one that orders the, the old uh, kinds of satellites compared to the new, uh, faster and cheaper satellites? Um, uh, government, uh, okay. uh, 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 big countries uh, are using the old satellites and the old satellites will still be there because they are very, very capable. Uh, uh, and, and also companies who have a very, very big customer, uh, 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 what's it called, uh, uh, Spectrum, mm. uh, is, is, uh, is using it. Inmosat, for example, with satellite phones, with geostationary satellites, Uh, they will still do that, but nanosatellites can do can move in low Earth orbit, and they can be only a fraction at the cost. So they can they can now start to addressing new customers, that uh, and, and s s smaller customer niches mm. that was not worthwhile and not not uh, feasible to to service with uh, uh, space solutions before. Okay, I mean the, the low Earth orbit and new customers. Um, what what are they using the nanosatellites for? I mean, if you if you connect it to our daily lives. Yes, um, a, a good example is actually one where we were the, the pioneer is to track aircraft. 
uh, you, uh, just a few years ago, you could not track aircraft. They, when the plane fell on, down on the way to Rio, we, they, it was not possible to find it right away. MH370, they haven't even found that yet. Exactly. We, right. put, we put a, a small uh, uh, radio on board, radio receiver on board, that was able to track the aircraft. And we have shown that we, we can track aircraft everywhere on the, on the face of the Earth with these small satellites at a very, very affordable cost. This is just one example. A lot of money, and especially by venture companies in the US, is putting into making new instruments to generate new source, uh, sources of information for, 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 for our daily life. Another example is, is uh, communication. Oh. Communication in the, in the uh, um, uh, uh, Africa area, in the equatorial area, is, is going to be something that is very important. And your famous uh, countryman, Hans uh, Gosling, uh, um, uh, also wrote about how the third world is not the third world anymore. Mm. They, they are developing very quickly and they are, uh, they are having buy, buying power, for not for the big expensive solutions, but for the inexpensive solutions like ours. For those ones. All right. Yes. Yeah, that's very, that's very interesting. Yeah, exactly as you say, uh, it's leapfrogging, yeah. going for the latest uh, and cheap uh, the technology. Yeah. Um, how... Uh, or, why should the customers choose uh, Gomspace ahead of your competitors? What's your moat? Um, of course, they should choose us for, 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 for a couple of reasons that I'll mention. But first, I would like to say we regard our, our competitors as colleagues also because we are together in making a new business segment. Mm -hmm. We are together in, and you could say with a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit too uh, 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 powerful word, we are disrupting the old space business. Mm -hmm. It's not nice to do that alone. Uh, so it's okay to have, have, have colleagues in, in, in that respect. It sounds costly. Yes, yeah. it does. So it's good to have colleagues mm. uh, uh, doing that. But of course, it's like, uh, it's like a bicycle race. You want to get over the finishing line first when, when, yeah. when, you're, finish, when you're getting nearer to the goal. Uh, where we distinguish ourselves is in two areas. We are very, very good. We are, we are world, world class in radio technology. And radio technology fits very well in these small satellites because they can even be they can still be pro uh, professional even though it's very very small devices. Uh, the other thing is that we have invested a lot in production, yeah. so we are now able to enter into the production phase with uh, with satellites. And that's not only nano satellites that's relatively new. That's in the whole space business that's relatively new to look at that in an industrial way. Okay, the the radio technology. Uh, tell us a bit more about that. What what does that mean? That means that we can put all sorts of radio frequency devices on board of the satellites. We can develop uh, uh, like software-defined radio types where you can make any radio from VHF to KU band radio. And that, that's, a ma that's many, many applications uh, that, that, that we can do. We can make remote sensing, we can even make imaging with, with radio technology. So it has a lot of potentials in, in many ways. And, and compared to optics, if you were to, to use optics that, that have a high resolution on, mm. on, on the face of the Earth, which is five to 800 kilometers away, mm. we need a big lens mm. and an inexpensive, a very expensive mm. uh, instrument. That's not very well suited for nanosatellites. But, okay. but, but radio can be made very small, and that's very well suited for, for, for nanosatellites. Oh, okay. So in that case, that means that the, the Google Maps are not going to use the nanosatellites when they, are, when, when they take photos of the Earth. Mm. But maybe if... If you want internet in Africa, you could use the nano satellite. Something like that, yes. Or if you want to 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 do policing in in mm. the in the rainforest, you can see see you you can detect somebody is using a satellite phone. You don't know whether they're smuggling uh, uh, narcotics, whether they're chopping down the trees, or, or it's legitimate what they're doing. So you can find out that something out there. You can see where it is, and then you can fly out and and and, and check it out. Okay. Can, can you just um can you just tease us just a little bit more about that, the, 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 the practical uh, examples from uh, rainforest and, and forestry? Yeah. And give us another example of how they, maybe government, governments or anybody, anybody else of your customers can use your technology. Yes, uh, a couple of examples. One example is that, that when we fly, uh, 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 when we go into an airplane, if mm. we go into Ireland and go to, to, to London, you will most likely be, be, be told we have to wait to a slot in London. Yep. When you start flying, when you get there, the slot is gone and you have to circulate over London yep. anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and the reason for that, uh, uh, and that happens many, many places. Yep. One of the reasons for that is that, that the, the air traffic controllers only use VHF radio. But you cannot use a VHF radio over the horizon. You can only use it at line of sight. Okay. So you can only use it when you get very close to the airport. 
you, with our satellites, you can make a radio link, take the VHF up to the satellite, to the next satellite, to the next satellite, and down to the airplane. And we can find the airplane because of the ADS-B capability. We can, we can detect and we can find the airplane. That's another example that mm. can save a lot of money in, in circulating over the cities, polluting and things like that. Save a lot of money. We like that. We like to save a lot of money and yeah. that, I guess the customers like that uh, as well. Yeah. Um, is, is this early adoption or, or are you already there? You already have the technology, you're already able to sell it to customers? We are already able to sell it to customers. Mm. The customers will go through what is called an in-orbit demonstration mm. before it becomes constellations. But, but the technology is there, is ready to be impl implemented. Okay, I feel a little bit smarter than, than just before this interview, mm. but can you just tell us a bit more about the total addressable market for the nano satellites? Yes, the, the, the total satellite market uh, is 270 billion US dollars per year. Right. Of that, we believe uh, uh, that, that if, we have, if, if a lot is invested, uh, that by 2023, it's about 6 billion uh, US dollars for nano satellites. Okay. Now, that's why we are not so, so afraid of competitors because we'll have enough to do yeah, all of yeah. us if if we go into if we go into that. Okay, and I guess for the nano satellites, uh, it's kind of more of a rapid growth compared to the old satellites. It's the, even though it's a small uh, piece of the total addressable market, the nano satellites are the ones that are actually driving growth. Yes, if you see from the from the big satellites down to the small satellites, yeah. the growth becomes bigger and bigger, bigger the smaller the satellites are. All right. Uh, last summer, you you uh, participated in an interview, and you said that you had a production facility just built, and uh, that gives you the capacity to produce a satellite a week, and very soon maybe a satellite a day. And yeah. um, what's your pace of production for now? And and give us uh, some insight about your backlog as well. The, the 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 size of the production is at the moment. We we, we are running this in. So a, a good number is, is, is a satellite every third week uh, okay. is, is a good number at, at, for now. And then we will be ramping that up over the next period. Uh, 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 the total capacity in the facilities is 350 satellites per year. Okay. Uh, and, and that will in, in due course get, get, get up to that. Uh, the, our order book uh, is, uh, we have a very big order from one particular customer. Uh, around uh, around 700 million uh, uh, Swedish kroner in the order book. A, uh, a lot of that comes from one customer that they, that have problems in getting financed at the moment. They cannot f uh, finance, and we expect that they cannot finance as quick as as as, as they expect. Uh, uh, so so we have we have slowed that down. On the other hand, the underlying business is driving very well. Uh, last year we went into into this year with uh, with uh, with that taken out. Uh, with 20 million, and we have so far made 100 million without that, that order. This year, it looks. Uh, if we look today, we will go into next year with 100 million mm. for next year. So the underlying business is growing uh, very well, uh, mm. and, and to, to our satisfaction. Uh, so uh, it's been a bit, bit of a fuss in the market uh, when it comes to that customers and postponing uh, the, the yes. sales targets. Yes. But in, in what you're actually telling us is that it's not that the customers say no thanks. We are going with a competitor. They are saying we we just need the financing. Yes, yes, and we we, we they 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 have trouble as you say with financing as quick mm. as possible. Possible. We have finished with the uh, with the uh, critical design review, so more or less the development of, of the, the product for them. So it's now get, uh, ready to get into the production phase, yeah. and that will uh, that will happen as they can get the money. All right. Last year, uh, 294 satellites <coughs> were sent up in orbit, an increase of 234 since 2016. It's quite a, a high number. Yeah. Um, how does this rapid growth uh, affect you? And how how many did you send up in orbit last year? <coughs> Uh, we we sent uh, uh, about uh, we we were uh, uh, directly uh, participating in, in somewhere between uh, ten and, and, and fifteen satellites okay. uh, that, that that we were directly uh, mainly involved in. We were probably on a lot more because we are also selling sub modules that people are buying and, mm. and putting into to a, to a lot of their, their satellites. We don't always know about the, those those uh, programs, but but the, the the growth. This is an example of the growth of of the nano satellites mm. uh, at the moment. So this is this is actually what we are. That, that's what we are part of. Mm. Uh, this high growth in, in, in launches of satellites. Mm. But you're you're selling uh, satellites for now. You're actually selling. It's not just research, re research and development, but you're selling. Yes. Um, yes. Do you have any recurring revenue from uh, from your satellites, or do you just sell them up front and that case closed? Uh, 
Um, there will be recurring revenue. Yep. Uh, the way it, it works is that we are we are first making in orbit demonstrations for mm. customers. They buy three to five satellites, and then then they are sent to in, into space okay. to to check out everything is okay and that the business case is okay. Is that on your risk? No, that's on their risk. Okay. They buy everything okay. of that. Yep. So you can say that's a bit of a recurring. The next uh, happen is that they go out and finance their projects. I'm mainly talking about uh, commercial customers. They go out and finance their projects, and then they are ready to launch constellations. Mm -hmm. And constellations can be 100, 200, in, in, in special cases, maybe 300 uh, uh, satellites that, mm -hmm. that can come up. Uh, so, so uh, and after that, the satellites will last for, for, for five years, and then they have to be replenished. So there's a, there's a, there's a recurring after that. They can change supplier later down yeah. the road, but it's very difficult. Okay. So, so, so there, it, it will be a recurring business that yeah. we are building up at the moment. There's one point that I would like to make is that with those in-orbit demonstration uh, customers, we're building up a portfolio of those, and they have to be financed. Yeah. Not all of them will be financed, uh, 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 but only if, if only a few will be financed and get through to, to building the constellations, it would be very fine for us. So that's a risk handling, a risk mitigation that we have uh, that that we have to take care of. So, so which customer group are the largest one for you? I mean, governments they they can always uh, pay, hopefully. Yes. And um, which uh, customer group is biggest in your? Uh, the, the the driving customers uh, with regard to growth is the the commercial customers. Okay. And that's that's the that's uh, mainly new companies that are introducing new services. Um, we do see that established companies are getting interested. We don't have established mm. customers in that uh, yet, but but uh, we, we we're moving in that direction. Okay, you're making uh, you're raising more capital, new capital for a rights issue. Yes. Um, how are you going to allocate the money, and for how long will you be sufficient so uh, have sufficient funds? Yes, the 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 new fund is 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 uh, or the, the the number is calculated from our new five year business plan that that we announced a, a couple of months ago, which is a five a five-year business plan uh, where we, we aim to reach 1.5 billion Swedish in 2023. Okay. Uh, um, uh, the money is for, for, for getting back to, to, to cash flow neutral, mm. uh, to, to invest in getting up to, 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 to that, uh, that number, and to be financially uh, solid because when we are getting this, this kind of big contracts, mm. we have to make sure and we have to display to the customers that we are we we are a, a solid uh, a, a, that we have the power. You will still be there in 2023. Yes, oh. and uh, and uh, so that's that's uh, that that's the the, the, the that, that's what we're going to use the money for. We all we have also also said that with those money we are not coming back uh, uh, and asking for more money. Uh, uh, for this business plan, and that means uh, cash flow neutral or, or break even, mm. one or the other, uh, midterm. We haven't put a specific date on because it's very sensitive it, yeah. if it becomes one quarter or the other. But that's a, that's our aim, and that's that's what we are focusing on at the moment. All right. So last year your revenue grew 20, uh, 78 percent, but the, your costs grew even faster. But yes. for this five-year plan up to 2023, you say you will not come to the market asking for new money, yes. and you will be yeah. uh, cash flow positive and um, report earnings bottom line. Ah, yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Um, okay, the, the new production plant. Yes. Um, I, I'm thinking about the costs for the unit yeah. cost as well. What about yeah. the? Do you, do you see a de decrease in unit costs when you ramp up for for mass production once, uh, maybe once a day? Yeah, initially we do because the way uh, uh, satellites, not only with us but nearly every place, is produced today is that one prototype is made and then that's it sent into space. It's a prototype mm. business. So going from prototype business to an industrial business, the prices will initially uh, go down because it's going to be more efficient to build a number and, and have blue colors doing than having scientists mm. to, to do it. Uh, but after that have settled, uh, we expect it, that the same thing will happen as if, if you look how what happened in the mobile uh, 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 phone industry, the PDA industry. Prices actually didn't go down. Mm. They, they more or less uh, maybe ra ra rose a little bit, but functionality went up. Mm. So the satellites will uh, uh, go a little bit up in price, and is our expectation. But the functionality, what they are capable of, will will go up very, very steeply. Okay, so maybe a, a bit of a risk that the price will go down a bit, but not that much. Then become stable. But the the the, the cost, the unit cost, will the unit yeah. cost go down and actually enable um, profits, the, the better margins for you. The, 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 the production the cost, yeah. yeah, definitely. The production cost will go go very much down over the period, especially 
especially the the hours put into the into the, into the satellites the the electronics it, it, there's met, uh, metrics you can calculate what uh, how much electronic cost with so and so many components mm. but the way it's produced the uh, the test uh, automatization uh, auto, uh, automatization of the tests and things like that is something that can really take hours out of out of the production mm. can you just elaborate just a little bit about the production cost in the future because i think that many uh, people viewing this are very interested in yeah. uh, both the revenue when it comes to 2023 about the five-year plan, both yeah. the projection of the revenue, but also of the cost of uh, the yes. satellites, of course. Yes. So from today until mass production, until yeah. maybe a nanosatellite a day, yeah. what, what, what's your goal for, for the cost? Um, I, we haven't uh, we haven't disclosed it directly cost as such, but 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 we are we are getting down on still on a very interesting place on the learning curve and the mm. scale curve you could say uh, to go down. We should we stu should still remember it's not mass production. Uh, it is industrial production. It's a big difference from prototype to, to, to industrial production. But m making a hundred, two hundred, or five hundred satellites is not making thousands of satellites. No. So no. so the, <laughs> no, so, so so uh, uh, that that uh, that area uh, where we are fitting in is, is something that we are very conscious yep. about. Um, but once uh, a day, I mean, it's it's satellites we're talking about. So one one satellite a day yeah. seems like a very very rapid production. It, it uh, does yeah. in, in that respect. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, uh, so so that's uh, uh, we're not giving specific numbers on that. But what we do expect is that our our um, our gross margins in the mid term we believe to beat the fifty percent target at, at 50 percent target for that mm -hmm. but we also expect that we can have higher profit at the end of this period because the barriers to entry in this business is is, is very high mm -hmm. it takes a long time it, it, it's 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 more or less standard electronics but putting it into space where where it's minus 50 and plus 50 degrees 17 times a day uh, radiation on on the satellites mm -hmm. you, you cannot do that unless you have shown it over many years that you're able to do that uh, so we expect that the demand will be higher than the supply for, for, for a period of time at the end of that and some years ahead. Uh, and so, that will so be positive for pricing? That will, be, that will make it possible for, for us to have a higher margin, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so do you have any thought about, the, even though you haven't disclosed it, do you have any thought about the operating margin? Uh, uh, so let's say 1.5 billion 2023 in operating uh, gross margin. We have of not 50. disclosed that, but but uh, but good numbers over 50 percent is is what the uh, good percentage points over 50 percent is what we expect at the end of uh, of the period at, uh, towards 2023 for the gross margin. And, and yes, what, yeah. what do you think about the, the operating margin? Uh, I, we're not disclosing any any numbers about that, but they, that 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 would be very closely linked mm. to each other because we are we are aiming to run a very lean. Uh, 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 organization with regards to overheads. Okay, just to wrap up, can you just tell me a little bit about the risks at Gom Space? Because investing is always about managing risk as well, of course. Yes. So just a bit about the risk that you think the viewer w should need to know, yes. and bef after the risks, where do you think Gom Space will be in five years, and then in that case, maybe twenty twenty three? Yes. Um, um, we have a very imminent risk at the moment that we are facing every day and we are focusing very much on. That is what I said before, going from prototype production to, to industrial production. Uh, making all those production readiness routines uh, in, in the space sphere and in, and, and in a company that, that we are building up, that must go right for us. We are doing well in that respect and we, and we are very confident about it, but we also have to, to think about that it's very important. Mm. That's the one thing. The other thing is what I said about the customers. Uh, uh, the customers, those who are driving the market here initially, are new companies that wants to disrupt some of the old companies or bring new services to the market. And, and they, are, they are coming with very novel ideas and a lot of those ideas are coming up at, at the moment. But they have to be funded yes. and not all of them will get the funding. So that means that we are building a portfolio up of in-orbit demonstration mm -hmm. tests customers. And, and they are paying, as, as you asked before. And then we have to, we have to play a, 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 what's it called a, a balanced game to figure out how many of those will get through and be financed. Mm. That's, that's a risk that, 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 that we have to, that, that's a critical risk for us. Uh, and, and, but the good thing is that there's many, many new projects coming up that wants to use nanosatellites. And we have a good advantage because we have the production facilities. Mm. So when they are looking for 
a supplier of the in-orbit demonstration test, they are also looking who can produce the, the, the satellites afterwards. So, so, so that's that in all a, a good uh, situation, but we have to make sure that uh, that we are, we, are, we, are, we are judging that risk mm. correct. And where do you want to be in five years? Yes, we, we, uh, we want to be uh, uh, at 1.5 million in turnover. Uh, and, uh, and that is because we expect some of those in our demonstrations to come true so we can start running the production quicker. Uh, uh, so it's not a lot of engineers that have to work, it's, it's a lot of production people who, who have to work. And then we expect to have moved more into software uh, because um, uh, today uh, we are uh, now, we, when, or when we start sending up many satellites, we have to manage a constellation of satellites in space, maybe 100 mm. satellites in space. It's like 100 advanced comp computers flying around in space. Yeah. And imagine in a company, you have to look after the, the company's IT system so it's running all the time. Yeah. It's exactly the same here. We are making business of, uh, on that. We're starting a, a, a subsidiary in, in Luxembourg to do that. That's a very good margin business area to, to, to be in. But on top of that, we can build more and more software so mm -hmm. that eventually, when people have their own instrument, they can also start developing uh, the, all the applications for that instrument on our constellation software as a background. That's the vision at the end of, mm -hmm. of, uh, of, of 2023 that, that, that we're looking at. That's uh, that, that, oh, sorry. Yeah, and at the same time, as the, as the business moves up uh, from from having been very much a production uh, company, we'll, we'll turn it more into a software company, and then we'll outsource more and more standard production uh, okay. to others. Okay, that's really interesting. Um, uh, when do you think you will come to that uh, to that day when you can uh, outsource standard production? Because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. this is not standard production for now. It's not standard no. production. Uh, all, the, all our print boards and, and the mounting of, 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 of components on that is done outside already. So yeah. there's, a, there's still a lot of uh, outsourcing. But the final test on sub-modules is done outside. Yeah. Uh, 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 that's, that can be progressed. One thing that we for quite some time have to, to, to keep is the final integration and test of the, of the satellites. Because if we are outsourcing too much too early, we are just educating a competitor. No, that, that, that's yeah. not good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that, that, sounds, uh, that, that sounds good. I mean, I, I think I, I said 1.5 billion in 2023. That's, that's wrong. You said 1.5 million. No, billion. You said 1.5 billion. Yeah, Swedish crowns. Yes, yes. Okay, in 2023. Yeah. Yes. Uh, just the last question. Um, software. Yes. It's a huge difference in, in, in margins between hardware and software. Exactly. Exactly. And, but do you see, Niels, in front of you that you're actually going to be this software company uh, taking care of all the company's satellites so they have this system, they need to pay this for the system uh, yeah. on a regular uh, basis? I, I, I can't see that far yet. Uh, I can't see what, how that will, how that will uh, play out. But it's something that we are we are thinking of constantly, so that we we, we take our our steps early enough, mm. uh, so we can see what 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 would be the cleverest uh, direction yeah. for us to go. So can software be ten percent of the revenue in twenty twenty three? Twenty percent. Twenty percent of our constellation management. Oh. Uh, twenty percent uh, is 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 what we aim for. All right, Niels. Good luck with the rice issue and the yeah. new money and yeah. in the future. Thanks very much. Nice to have you here. Thank you for the